There are four forces that act on aircraft in flight. The first is thrust, and this is what moves the aircraft forward. Then you have drag. This is the total rearward force that opposes thrust, and there's two types. There's parasite drag, which is the drag from the aircraft, which is high at high airspeeds, and then you have induced drag, which is the byproduct of lift, and that's high at high angles of attack. Then we have weight. Weight pulls the aircraft down due to gravity, so this means it will act in the same direction as gravity. Here is lift. Lift keeps the airplane flying and it counters weight and it acts perpendicular to the wings. The next rule we're going to talk about is load factor. This is the ratio of total lift to weight and it's measured in terms of g-force. So in level flight, lift equals weight and load factor equals 1g. A concept to take away from this is that while you're maneuvering in combat, you mainly consider the direction of your lift vector. This is because you're likely going to be full thrust and you won't have a major weight change during a visual engagement. This is the tactical egg, and it's used to show how gravity affects your turn performance in different planes of motion. A plane of motion is how an airplane flies relative to the horizon. When we're looking at turn performance, we're considering turn rate and turn radius. So if turn rate increases or if turn radius decreases, then your turn performance is increased. There are three different planes of motion while we're maneuvering. There's horizontal, vertical, and oblique. When we initiate a turn, as bank angle increases, your lift decreases. So naturally we pull back on the stick and this increases our angle of attack, which will in turn increase lift and the load factor and helps us hold altitude. This gives the effect of increased turn performance, but this isn't indefinite, because as bank increases, you need a higher angle of attack, which is more low factor, and this eventually leads to a stall. So we're starting out in straight level flight, we're going to initiate a turn. So as we turn, the lift vector is going to split up into radial G, which turns the airplane, and vertical lift, but the vertical lift can't oppose the weight, so we end up starting to descend. We want to halt the altitude loss, so we pull back on the stick and increase our lift and load factor. This in turn increases the vertical lift to fully oppose the weight so we stop losing altitude, and it also increases radial G so we will end up turning faster. This scenario only gets worse when we start increasing the bank angle. As it increases, you'll lose altitude unless you increase lift. This increases load factor, which in turn will increase the vertical lift and the radial G. The problem is, is that the radial G is going to be less than the load factor, so you're actually fighting against gravity. So this means in a purely horizontal turn, you're going to be losing energy until you stall. Getting back into straight and level flight, we're not turning anymore, so there's no more radial G. Lift and weight are back to being equal, which means our load factor is now equal to 1G. Now we'll look at how gravity affects the vertical plane. If you are vertical, Gravity has no effect, and radial G is the same as the load factor. If you're inverted, however, gravity assists your turn performance. So the radial G will be greater than the load factor. This will give you a faster turn rate and a smaller turn radius. If you're upright, gravity will reduce your turn performance, and radial G is less than load factor, which will result in a slower turn rate and a higher turn radius. The concept to think about here is that if you want to improve turn performance, it's more energy efficient when you're inverted because you have the gravity assisting you. So here we are again in certain level flight. We're going to initiate a loop and we'll look at things in the vertical plane. Note that as we begin the loop, radial G is small. This is because we're fighting against gravity and this hurts our turn performance. Then once we reach our perfectly vertical point here, Gravity has no effect on radial G, so load factor is in fact equal to radial G at this point. Now as we start going inverted, our turn performance is going to increase. This is because the gravity and the load factor are in the same direction, and they add together. So this means when inverted, you increase turn performance without sacrificing energy. Coming down on the back side of the loop, gravity has less of an effect on radial G. Then at 90 degrees, it has no effect, so load factor equals radial G. And now as we complete the loop, we can see our radial G is lower and our turn performance is decreased because now we're fighting against gravity. 
So from all this, we learn that if the lift vector is above the horizon, we're going to have lower turn performance, and if the lift vector is below the horizon, we're going to have higher turn performance. The last plane of motion is the oblique plane. This is any plane outside the pure horizontal or vertical. Gravity still affects you in this plane, so your energy management with or against gravity dictates your turn performance. When you're fighting a bandit, both you and the bandit are within the tactical egg together, but you're in your own planes of motion. So you need to remember gravity's effects on turn performance for both of you. By using the energy from gravity when you're inverted, it gives you a boost to your turn performance, which can provide an advantage in a dogfight. That completes the video on the tactical egg. If you liked it, use the like button and let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe.